this is Ron and Matt with Denver Heavy Metal Society, and we're here talking with Black Lamb, heavy metal band from Denver, Colorado. Thank you guys again for having us here. Thank you. It's great to sit down and talk with you and to listen to some of your songs. So um, if you guys don't mind, just um, real quick, if you could just sort of introduce yourselves and your role in the band and um, maybe then go back as a group and go over and just give us a little bit of brief band history, if you, if you don't mind. Okay, I'm Brian. I sing and play tambourine. I'm Joe. I play the drums. Keith, play guitar. Bill, guitar. Our bass player, Tim, is somewhere between here in Pueblo, uh, pulled over at a tavern, I'm sure. <coughs> we will be at the show on Sunday, Sunday. hopefully. And, um, and then uh, the history of the band, uh, me and Billy had played with each other since, oh, that sounded weird. Me and Billy <laughs> had been in bands together uh, since 1988, probably, a band called Wretched Refuse in high we've, school. We've played with each other since 86, but in a band since 88. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, went different directions in uh, the 90s, and then we uh, met up with a, a buddy, Ben Ryan, and a, another buddy from Arvada, John Goss, in 1999, and started this originally as The Lambs. Uh, quickly, after our first little demo, a band in Sweden uh, emailed our or their lawyer did and said that they were called The Lambs and changed the name to Black Lamb and then kind of had a, kind of a bit of a revolving lineup of people that are kind of all in the metal and punk and whatever scenes. A lot of uh, seasoned musicians um, and just kept, kept it rolling for, now, I guess, almost 13 years on New Year's Eve. It'll be 13 years since we started recording as Black Lamb. So, 13 years and still rich. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Well, you guys are getting ready to play um, Harvest Fest. Yay! On yeah. Sunday. And I uh, was wondering if you could give us just a little bit of a, of a preview of what, what fans can expect from your set. A couple new stuff, uh, a couple new songs. Uh, Keith, Keith's a pretty recent uh, member of the band. Him and I have been uh, writing. We're... As a band, when we kind of started out as a guitar band, you know, heavy metal guitar band, and uh, it's hasn't changed its course. So Keith and I do a lot of the, the musical writing. Brian does all the lyrics uh, for the most part. And Keith wrote the lyrics to one of the songs. Yeah, Keith actually <laughs> threw in some lyrics. But uh, Joe's a brand new member. Uh, he's actually learning with everybody else and uh, doing great so far. But uh, yeah, we're uh, this is a. Uh, Looking forward to playing this show with a new lineup and uh, new material. We have two new songs we'll be playing in the set that we're real proud of and can't wait to play them. Excellent. All right. And um, are you guys working on any recordings at the moment that we can look forward to? Or? We've got, what, about five songs in the works now, we're working on yep. a few more. Yeah we've, we've got, <laughs> yeah, we've got two in the bag that we'll be playing for the uh, playing in the show. set, but we probably have, Keith and I probably have another four or five more that we've been working on the past six months and uh, we should have an EP at least by spring yeah um, it's we have March Sterling uh, Sterling Winfield that is recorded with Pantera and Hell Yeah and stuff had emailed us about six months ago and said like kind of get on it and uh, record some stuff and all and he's going to try to produce it hopefully still um, we do have kind of a different situation at this age. We all have other stuff going on in our lives, so we don't get to dedicate as much of our time as we did, you know, 10 years ago. So our, our bass players in Pueblo, um, you know, he does sound. We all are in like other bands or careers or whatever. So it takes a little bit longer than uh, um, it used to take. But I mean, we should have something out by spring. We're hoping. Um, not sure what it'll be titled yet, but. Kind of, you know, two of the songs that you heard tonight will be on it, um, and that kind of, kind of along that vibe, a heavy, heavy rock and roll, um, kind of classic sounding, but you know, not too uh, new metalish, you know, more of a. That's been kind of our mo over the past 13 years. Is that uh, we're definitely in a genre of music, but uh, each album sounds completely different than the last. I mean, we've had our uh, cock rocky albums, and we've had our. Uh, semi-thrash albums and you know we're just we try to change it up every time we record um, well mainly because we have different members every time we record. <laughs> <laughs> I 
songs every three years. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, well, Ryan and I are the only two original members of the band, um, and uh, and it shows. I mean, because everyone. It, it's never been a band where, where one guy writes the music and one guy writes the lyrics. I mean, Brian writes predominantly most of the music, and, and I, I write a lot of riffs and stuff, but uh, the band is always a conglomerate, and so uh, we've had a lot of different influences come to the band, and that's why each album sounds a little bit different than the last one, and, you know, we it's kind of fun because we don't have this, we're not in this uh, stereotypical kind of deal where, you know, we sound the same every album, and so it's always a little bit different, and it's it's fun to do it that way. And how it's many, still always Black Lamb. It's still know, always somehow. Black Lamb, yeah. And how many albums do you guys have, and are they available? <coughs> sure, yes, um, we've got records that are probably still available, possibly still on stonerrock.com. On The Low Road from 2002, Hang the Moon from 2005, Corridos Negros from 2010, and then in between then, we've always done like kind of demo, self-released uh, stuff. Um, Lambs, uh, High and Mighty, um, what else we've done? A lot of, of stuff, a lot of stuff like we don't mass ten. produce. I, I think yeah. Hang the Moon, uh, The Low Road, and uh, Credos Negros are the ones that you could probably, probably yeah. get pretty readily online. We don't know, we never do know if they sell through or not because it's one of those things that because of the great but, um, gang and conglomerate that is um, Black Lamb. It's always like some guy got it sent to his PayPal or whatever, you know, we don't know who, we never get any of the money, so it's just kind of <laughs> for the people to get a hold of it. We're like the misfits, we worked for 13 years and haven't seen a penny. <laughs> <laughs> but yet there's shit me. always <laughs> out there, I mean, there's somebody else with, with a Black Lamb shirt on the anyway. <clears throat> Are you guys going to have merch available at Harvest Fest? Yeah, yeah we'll have t-shirts and I think some Carritos Negros uh, CDs. Um, but uh, that should probably be about it. And I think we still have stickers left. Well, we were going to ask you guys if we can borrow some money to get some. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's going to be a quick turnaround. Yeah. Yeah. They go no, absolutely. Well, you'll get a... That's not a pyramid scheme of any kind. You will get your money. <laughs> I'm 100% <laughs> sure you'll get 30% of your profit. Your investment, yeah. <laughs> We'll get the profit. You can keep 30% of your investment just to participate. Excellent. Excellent. So, do you, are, do you guys have any, any touring plans in the foreseeable future? Yeah, I mean, as soon as we get this next uh, thing out, we just, we've toured many times without the product, and people forget about you as soon as you leave because they don't have anything really to remind them of you. And, uh, and uh, oftentimes the sticker isn't enough. So, as soon as we um, get this... Uh, out and hopefully we'll do it on vinyl and uh, digital and as soon as that's done and hopefully it'll be done by early spring maybe even um, we like we love to go around the time of South by Southwest we're friends with a lot of people in Texas and they've like, been treated well there um, so we'll go like the week before the week after kind of as like a, a, a break from all the piped up bands you know the local people like want to just go see like a real band and uh, we do well, so probably maybe around March, whenever that uh, South by Southwest time is, we could yeah, go out for a couple of days. As a um, self-sustaining band, we have to have a product to go anywhere. I mean, if we leave fucking Wheat Ridge, we got to have something to sell, or we're, it's coming out of our own pocket. So to do stuff like you know South by Southwest, and obviously on the way down there, I know Keith has a lot of connections in Albuquerque, and and we've played there many a times, but. Like Brian says, to go down there with a sticker or a, uh, you know something like that is you know it's not worth our while. We're just it's a money pit for sure. It and, is, uh, and when you're paying for your own gas and your own food and stuff, you you have to go out there with t-shirts and stuff like that because that's what that's what eat. keeps you to eat. You, know? <laughs> you can you know it's just the way it is. So. If you had to describe Black Lamb to a metal fan that had nothing, that knew nothing about you guys, how, how would you describe yourselves? Chaos. <laughs> no, I, I think I we're very uh, versatile as a band. I mean, we're, if you actually listen to the music, there's a, I mean, we have a lot of metal influence, obviously, um, but we also have a lot of punk influence. I mean, Hagman and I grew up in the Arvada area. 
Um, and in Colorado, for that matter, the punk scene has been huge here for many, many years. And uh, you can't help to be enveloped by that stuff. And it always influences everything you do. I mean, no matter what a, how big of a metal fan you might be, it just seems that the punk influence kind of works its way into your, into your genre. But and kind of teaches you how to survive broke. Too. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so you you kind of figure out that you got to go drive down to Highlands Ranch to the guy that presses CDs and stuff in his basement and has the best price, and then he kind of works with you and. You gotta own money out the back end when you get back, and and you figure out these kind of people that have a lot more of a DIY um, aesthetic than a lot of the, uh, you know, metal bands that kind of are touring in packages and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, kind of already have a built-in support system, whereas it, you learn in the punk scene that like you kind of gotta just go out and do it yourself, or you're never gonna leave. You're never gonna be able to see other places. Right. <coughs> what are some of your specific musical influences? Like band-wise, artist-wise? I mean, we're kind of rooted, of course, in like the Black Sabbath tradition, yeah. but, uh, you know, you know, coming from that, you know, you branch off and you hear a million other things. You hear Pentagram, you hear Trouble, you hear The Cult is a real big influence on me. Sure, you, hear, you hear country influences, you know, yeah. I know a lot, of, a lot of the stuff that, a lot of the riffs that I play actually don't come from metal influence, they come from country western, early country western influences, Leonard Skinner, Right. Stuff like that. I'm a huge fan Mountain. of Mountain. Yeah, a huge fan of all that old Southern music, country Western, but also at the same time I'm a big stoner. You know, so it's like <laughs> Black Sabbath, and it, it's it's kind of like it's a big car crash. And as musicians, and I know I you know I speak for Keith. I mean, we're influenced from everything from metal to classical to country to easy top to the yeah, exactly. grind and thrash is fine. You know? It's it's hard it's hard to be a musician and be uh, tunnel visioned into one class of music. You're just influenced by everything and uh, you mold it into your own style. And that's pretty much the definition of Black Lamb, really. Are you guys fans of Down by any chance? The band? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. I mean, we're old it's farts, so Down's almost on <laughs> the more aggressive side for me. But I'm a big fan of uh, of uh, Phil and Salmo and uh, Jesus Peppers. One of my bigger influences, man. That guy's yeah, got, got the COC. He's totally got, got the. He, <laughs> he's actually the epitome of what we try to do. I mean, he's got that southern influence, but he's also got that super heavy influence, and he, he's like, he's really got that style down to an art. You know, I, I, I owe a lot of my style to Pepper. I mean, he, I'm just kind of following his footsteps. You know, I really admire that guy. Excellent. Well, I think that probably does it. For um, sure. We'll see you guys on Sunday. Yeah. Rock and roll. Black Lamb. Look for them at Harvest Fest and for a new record coming soon. And real, maybe some touring. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, for sure. Thank you guys so much for, for the, taking the time to talk with us. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. All right. Denver Heavy Metal.